Welcome to Superior Profit Morning Market Meeting, 14th March 2019. I'm Sagar Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit based in Singapore. I will not take time to introduce myself. You may find more detail about me, the company and its trading systems from the website superiorprofit.co. Before we begin, we go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on superior profits trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. This session is meant to be a demonstration of top down, bottom up, and inside based identification of trade opportunities using Q systems on the live market. This is different from the weekly market roundup where we primarily focus on top down analysis. That was the last slide of the presentation. Let's move to live system. We begin our study with the Australian index AXJO. We are looking at it using the weekly backdrop template on the left and daily entry or hop on template on the right. Together we call this at a glance template because this template helps us decide if there is a low risk swing trade entry opportunity at the right edge in only a few seconds. Last week, AXJO ended with a long upper tail candle. That was a bearish shape candle. Earlier, it had made a long run up after displaying the bullish headwind signal. Whenever there is an upper tail candle, we are careful. This week, today is already Thursday, price tried to go down but recovered somewhat. In the daily chart, price was near the upper boundary level. From there, it fell. Today, that is Thursday's candle color is remaining bearish. There is no trade setup in AXJO right now. What about China market? Previous week, China index CSI 300 also displayed a bearish shape candle, though the color was bullish. This week, as of Thursday, it is giving us another mixed to somewhat bearish shape candle in the weekly chart. In the daily chart, price was well above the upper boundary level. It returned to the upper boundary and currently remaining below that. In the weekly chart, price is still overbought. There is no trade signal in CSI 300 right now. Hong Kong. Previous week, it had a reversal candle. We can see the reversal signal in the weekly chart from the pendulum and reversal band. This week price initially opened lower but recovered. In the daily chart we can see initially it opened lower, recovered on Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday it didn't move anywhere. It is moving sideways for three consecutive days. In the weekly chart, price is overbought. There is no trade signal in Hong Kong market also. 
India's Nifty 50 index. This seems to be moving against all the other indices that we study. A while ago, it used to be the best performer. Subsequently, it was moving in a sideways range when the other markets were going up. And now that the other markets are stopping to go up, India market broke out of the narrow range. Weekly candle color and shape both are bullish. In the daily chart, we can see the range bound move. The last trading opportunity would be at this bull release signal using the box long trade setup. Part of that profit could be booked at this watermark resistance or at this watermark resistance as the index broke out and is continuing to go up, you could continue to hold at least partial position. Currently, it is overbought in both the daily as well as the weekly chart to extend it to take any long trade. UK market FTSE index. It was moving sideways in the weekly chart. In the weekly chart, it is still in a range. As I mentioned many times, breakout of a range may happen after the breakout from a memory resistance. In the daily chart, we see that happening. It broke out of the memory resistance. In fact, broke out of the triangle pattern formed by memory resistance trend line and memory support trend line. It broke out of that range today. It still has to move some distance to break out of this watermark resistance, which will mean breaking out of the sideways range. In this way, if you are observing the memory resistance lines, you will identify a breakout probably well ahead of others, maybe one day, two day, or even more number of days ahead of others. They give you lower risk entry opportunities. You could take the long position in FTSE index, or you could take it in any of the British stocks that are also going up now. Notice that there are many uncertainties about the Brexit deal, whether it will pass or not. If you keep an eye on the news, you may be influenced by that and miss some trading opportunities. On the other hand, if you look at the charts, broad market, FTSE index first, and if it is bullish, if it is breaking out, the key way of trading is to then drill down into strong industries in the UK market, further drill down into strong fundamental stocks, and then look for low risk buying opportunities. You will do better by doing that instead of focusing too much on the news. Still, it is not a bad idea to keep an eye on the news, so long as it is more news and less biased opinion. I use icon for that. Later on today, I will show the different ways that I use icon. And those are the only ways I use icon. Icon has a lot of data, but too much information that doesn't lead to decision making is not really helpful. So in Q trading, we focus on efficiency. There are only certain things that we use icon for, and I will demonstrate that today. I will look at the USA index later. Let me start with icon. I have run icon. You can see this at the top left corner, the icon menu. I have clicked on the name of the workspace to hide it. That's why you can see it is in gray color. The moment I click it again, it brings the workspace to the front. I have multiple tabs. In the first tab, I keep an eye on the overall news. 
and you can see sometimes you can click on watch now to see live event going on like the UK Parliament debate is going on now you can click watch now you don't need any subscription to any cable channel you can watch it live right from the icon terminal these are the major news front page and then the latest news are listed here some of the trending topics some interesting videos and then further analysis and insight i don't necessarily click on the headlines to see what is going on unless i have some time and just want to know about the news for trading purpose it is sufficient to just read the headline because my trading technique q trading technique doesn't have any checklist on news conditions we have unambiguous checklists for all the trade setups none of them say that the news has to be like this news has to be like that it's good idea to keep an eye on what is going on but not necessarily to drill down why is it a good idea to keep an eye on the news you know there was a boeing aircraft that crashed few days ago and then countries were banning use of a certain model of Boeing. Just to know that Boeing is in the news would make you avoid taking a long position in Boeing. When a stock is moving so much based on news, whether upward or downward, volatility is too high, risk is too high, it's better to avoid trading those stocks. That is the use of this broad news. Then I have the real time news news app i have set it to english language and then currently i am filtering for united states news all the news that are coming out of the united states will stream here they will keep floating to the top the important news are colored in red color again i don't necessarily drill down into the news which you could do by clicking on the headline I just keep an eye on them, especially the important ones. Now the filter criteria could be a country or it could be any stock. If Boeing is in news, you could search for the Boeing company either with its symbol or start typing the company's name. And it will show you the top matches. You can click on the stock. Now you are going to see all the news that are coming on the stock you could also apply the news on a portfolio i trade in multiple countries invest in several countries in stocks and i have created portfolios for each of them so if i want to apply one of the portfolios let's say singapore Singapore watch list. Here I have all the stocks that I may be interested in. Either I'm holding them or I'm thinking of holding them. If I click on that, then news of all the stocks of my interest will be shown. Again, in real time streaming news. You could actually apply multiple portfolios or watch lists that you create. So the streaming live news can be based on the country, can be based on an individual stock or can be based on portfolio or you could probably mix them up also in the third tab i look at the economic events i have filtered only for the united states if you are investing in other countries you could filter for those countries as well i am looking at the medium to high importance events we can see the economic events it is today's list 14th march today we have two or three important events at 8 30 related to import prices initial jobless claims and continued jobless claims and at 10 a.m eastern standard time we have new home sales then you will have the statistics what is the estimate what is the actual data etc 
again i don't click on the statistics to see whether it is up or down whether it is up or down doesn't matter so much whether the market is going matters more i just need to know when the events are due and don't try to take a trade just before that especially in related industry so if new home sales is coming up at 10 am i may not want to enter a trade in home builders at 9:30 or 9:40 i will wait for the news to come out sometimes the news doesn't affect the market at all sometimes it does therefore to manage risk it is better to wait for the news also if you keep an eye on these events you will know whether it is okay to enter the trades right at market open or near market open for example using intraday q template fine tune chart at market open or should you wait if there is a major event at 10 o'clock then you may as well wait until 10 o'clock to see where the market or that particular stock is going if there is no major event at 10 o'clock then you may use the early range breakout technique to enter trade before that also you will see often the futures also will change direction after the major events at 8:30 am or the 10 am time next step i keep an eye on the country as a whole i am investing in multiple countries what is important for me to know is whether there is a trading holiday coming up or not so i can see in the america north america usa the next holiday is 19th april that is more than one month away so i wouldn't need to worry much about that when swing trading stocks next i keep an eye on the new highs and new lows if you keep watching this day after day you will start to have a feeling what is going on i choose the country united states when i am trading in the americas if i am trading in another country i can choose that country as well icon allows us to view the data of all the countries in the world that is the power of the platform and it delivers everything in real time as well i have selected all venues usually i will choose ordinary shares only and i may give at least a lower price limit if i want to give a higher price limit i can give a higher price limit also and then volume limit that i usually don't use then it will show the most active volume then top performers bottom performers and the news related to the stocks in these three categories if you keep an eye on this you will be able to identify trading opportunities from here also interestingly i see aurora cannabis stock is here scb some time ago i posted a forum topic on scb on that day also scb came in the list of most active volume stocks let me have a look at the forum post i can search for acb Sixteen days ago, I scroll to the top. Sixteen days ago, twenty sixth February, I posted this topic. At that time, the stock was breaking out of a triangle pattern. This is the pattern that we saw in FTSE also. The weekly was bullish at that time. It was breaking out of the triangle pattern with a bullish shape candle. swing band indicator was showing that it is in an uptrend and this is the news in icon at that time i used the news app that i showed just now where did i find those news i found it from here i could change it to acb and only acb related news would come here not anti competitive <laughs> acp i should choose aurora cannabis but i don't need to choose the toronto 
exchange, I can choose the US exchange symbol ACB. Okay, change to Toronto exchange listing. No, no issue. For news, it doesn't matter which exchange we are using. You can see all the news related to Aurora Cannabis are coming. That is what I added to my 26th February post. Also on that day, Aurora Cannabis happened to be one of the most active volume stocks. And this was a snapshot of the morning session. And now if you see, going back to equity stocks, you can see now also SCB is one of the most active stocks. What happened to SCB after I shared the post? Let's have a look at that, SCB. If there is not enough data, then a warning message may come in Q Global. I shared the post in the forum on this day. At that time, it was breaking out of the memory resistance. It was breaking out of a triangle pattern. Our stop would be just below the recent low and our profit target would be at the upper boundary. You could book the profit on this day also. If not, you could book it yesterday also. It is looking technically very strong. Therefore, you would not need to exit full position. SCB is a new stock, relatively new IPO for such a stock. Uh, I would think that the industry strength is not that important. You may keep an eye on other cannabis stocks, but in my experience for new IPOs, the performance will be primarily dictated by its own performance and own news. That is how I could effectively use the equity stocks app in ICON to identify Aurora Cannabis on 26th Feb, take a very low risk trade and profit handsomely from that. In the ne next step, I have set up the portfolios. This is a blank portfolio work area. I have created headings. So at the top, I may keep an eye on the market. I can look at S&P futures. And if I have any bullish holding, which I may have in PBF, a stock that I shared in the community forum, I can track that. If I am bearish about any stock, for example, adsk.o, again, a stock that I shared in the forum, then I may list that as well. And then I can list the watch list stocks. What am I able to see from here? The symbol, the ticker symbol, which may sometimes differ, especially for non-USA countries. Last price, closing price, net change, percentage change with a color heat map. The one which is most bullish will be cyan, one which is most bearish will be red. Five day percentage change, volume and volume change five day over 30 day. Again, using the same heat map, dividend yield, market cap, because we would not like to trade very low market cap stocks. Next earning state, industry and sector information. You can create one such list for each of the countries you are trading in. It is a very effective way of tracking all your stocks irrespective of which brokerage you are using. You may be using multiple brokerages, but here you can add all the stocks that you are trading on different platforms. Another thing you may do is to set alerts. Let's go back to our stock ACB. Suppose you are holding on to partial position and you would like to apply a trailing stop. We can go to the stop template and we can see that our current stop level is at this point. 
which is 8.28. Sometimes traders like to put the stop order as a good deal cancel GTC order with the broker. That is also fine. And sometimes traders like to keep the stop in mind and watch the stock if it is going to hit the stop and recover during the day or not and check the outcome at the end of the day. How do you know if the stop is being hit? Or sometimes you may even not give the exit order, profit taking order, but see if after hitting your initial profit target, is it rapidly going up? In both the cases, you would like to keep an alert on the stock's price, if it is hitting the stop level or the target level. That there is an easy way to do that in icon. You can click the alerts icon at the top right hand side. And let's say we want to keep an alert on ACB for the remaining position at 8.28, let's say 8.25. So we can create a new alert. ACB. I want the USA market. I cannot see it now. Never mind. Mm, I don't know why. Or uh, ACB, Aurora Cannabis. SCP and our stop was again at let's say 8.25. So criteria close. Less than equal to eight point. AC, I, I, I can put a comment also ACP has hit stop level. Check if okay, check if I need to exit the position. And then I can set the alert. Once a day is fine, you can set for how many days you want to keep the alert active for. Usually I just keep more than one month, two months. And once the trigger is hit, I can come back and delete it. You can choose email. And if you have set up your email, then in real time, you can see in real time or schedule. I usually prefer real time. Icon, everything is real time. Our all queue systems are real time. So if it now hits the stop level on the remaining position, even during the day, it will send me an email. Wherever I am, I can check the email on my mobile phone and take appropriate decision. I can click set. So the alert is saved. You can also choose the portfolio here. So we have the portfolio for watch list work area for any country, in fact. You can choose the Singapore watch list also. And I may be clicking somewhere wrongly. Watch list. This one. Okay, it's not cooperating, but if I click properly, then it will allow me to set a alert on the entire portfolio. So if any stock has any event, earnings event, or major announcement, I will get an alert on that also. That's a very nice way to keep track of all your stocks and then set alerts using the monitor application like I'm showing now and using the alert that you can open from the top right hand corner. Another thing that I use icon for is to decide 
which option should I trade? For option trading, volatility is important. Sometimes we may be correct in direction, but still lose money if we play the volatility wrongly. If I'm buying options like naked call or put, simple call or put, I try to buy the lower priced option. Lower priced in what sense? In terms of strike as well as in terms of expiry. Let me demonstrate with an example. Let's look at this first. This is a volatility smile. It's called smile of FAS. What is FAS? Let's plot FAS. It's a financial bull 3x ETF. Why I am looking at it? You can see in the weekly chart, it came to the memory resistance line. In fact, in that time, I took a short position using FAS and made nice profit as it fell down, about 50% profit on simple put option. And now this week so far, it has recovered back to the same memory resistance in weekly. What about daily? Daily had displayed a bearish headwind signal, then price fell. That was the time when I initiated my previous short position using put option. And now it has recovered. It has come to the daily memory resistance as well. Memory resistances work quite well. We have a watermark resistance also. We have a price level where bearish headwind came earlier. This is a sweet spot to start looking for shorting opportunities. Because it is a 3x ETF, the options may not be very cheap. It is probably a good idea to use verticals. If you are bearish on FAS based on today's market move, you may watch FAS after market open. If it is starting to go down, which you would probably track using the intraday fine tune chart. If it is going down, you could look for a bearish trade. Now the question is, for FAS, will you use short call vertical or you will use long put vertical and which strike and which expiry? You can decide that using volatility smile. For simplicity, let me just use the example of whether you will buy a put or sell a call. And also decide which expiry. Let me see if the volatility surface can help in that. This is the volatility smile of FAS. I have selected two months, April and July. You can choose different expiries from this ad drop down. I have filtered for only monthly expiries. If you want the weekly expiries, you can come to the top right hand corner, click on the cog and you can include the weekly options. I am not doing that now. What do we see from here? Let us focus on the add the money delta. We have the green line, that is the July expiry. We have the yellow line, that is the April expiry. What it is telling me is that, in fact, across all the strike prices, all the deltas, the yellow line is lower than green line. Yellow line also has significant number of days to expiry. It is April expiry and currently we are in March. Therefore, if I'm swing trading using FAS, I will do better if I buy April expiry, not July expiry. And sometimes you will see the further expiry line is coming below the near expiry line. That means in that case, it would be better to buy the further expiry. But for FAS, if we are buying a put now, it makes sense to buy the April expiry. I was discussing with 
a trader recently who is using Q systems and he gave me an idea that if I am trading FAS, why don't I also look at FAZ? I was not doing that earlier. Thanks, Gary, for that. FAZ, what is that? It is financial bear 3x ETF. This is the financial bear 3x ETF. So if I am buying a put option on FAS, that is equivalent to buying a call option on FAC. Which one should I do? Again, using the volatility surface, I can decide which one is cheaper. I have created another surface chart. Here I am comparing FAC and FAS in the one month expiry. In the one month expiry, FAC is yellow line and FAS is green line. If we look at, at the money, then we see the green line that is FAS is lower than FAC. Therefore, if I am buying at the money option, then I should go for FAS put instead of trying to buy FAC call. When we have inverse ETFs, we can use the volatility surface to decide which one to use. On the other hand, if you are okay to sell options, then which one will you sell? Instead of selling call on FAS, you would make, it would be better to sell put on FAC. This comparison helps us decide whether to use a linear ETF or the inverse ETF. From here, we can see we should be, if we are buying options, we should be using FAS. With that inside, let us go back to the FAS volatility surface. From here, we already saw we are going to buy April, not July. If we are buying April, the next question is, which strike shall we buy? We can see this is at the money. And if I go out of the money on the call side, I see my volatility is decreasing. Therefore, price is also decreasing. On the put side, on the other hand, if I go out of the money, volatility is increasing. So price is increasing. Because we are bearish on FAS, we are thinking of taking a put option. It makes sense, therefore, either to go at the money or even in the money, then the volatility will be lower, will be paying less. But if we buy out of the money, we will end up paying more. Combining all of this, we can see that if we are bearish on FAS, the financial bull 3x ETF, then the correct options instrument to use is options on FAS, not the inverse FAC. Further, we can derive that we should be buying the put and add the money, not out of the money put. Those are the things we can decide from volatility surveys. Very visual, very easy to use. Probably the best smile graph that I have seen in any platform. And it allows me to compare multiple symbols, related symbols. Those are all the things that I use icon for. Top news that I keep an eye. And they are also ordered properly. Top news and then news about a stock. Economic events. Broad country information. New high low for the day. It also shows the active volume, top performers, worst performers, the portfolio, and the volatility surface. And then I take my actual trade using Q systems, using the Q charts and Q vital and Q edge. That was an overview of all the ways that I use icon in my trading. 
let me now go through some of the recent forum posts before I end. As usual, no pick and choose. I will go through all of them one by one. Yesterday, I shared this post, an application software company looking weaker. That was on Autodesk. I saw the application software industry. If you look at the industry score, it is not bearish. However, if you look at the base column, as of the time I shared it, and I shared it, I think in the morning session at 10.30 a.m. EST, we need to confirm trade setups at market close, but we can use the real-time age, real-time vital to start identifying opportunities. And if you want, you can even enter the trade with very low risk using intraday fine-tune chart. I noticed that application software was decelerating at that time. Then I drilled down and I looked at Autodesk. Why Autodesk? I had already taken a trade earlier on Autodesk based on another forum post. In all my webinars, I only share stocks that I have already shared beforehand. In our forum, in our Twitter, in our Facebook, we don't have the practice of finding stocks and looking back and showing how beautifully it worked. That's not superior profits way. I took a profitable trade in Autodesk that was a bearish trade and I was keeping an eye on it yesterday when application software was showing weakness in deceleration I checked the fundamentals again I always check the fundamentals afresh using cube vital because it may change between the last time and the present time and I saw it remained same valuation is in the middle yellow color and earnings growth is strong. No more earnings results came out. I looked at the chart. When I posted it in the daily chart on the left hand side, it had recovered from the yellow direction line to value area. Value area is the middle of the two boundary lines. And then it was starting to give me a bearish shape candle. I looked at the intraday chart and I saw at that time, Price tried to initially go up, but created a very bearish shape candle and fell back inside the early range. I also noticed there were multiple memory support trend lines. What I mentioned in the post is that if these memory trend lines are broken on intraday, and this was a 10 minute chart, then I said the long position holders may be careful and short, position, short traders may look for low risk entry opportunity. That was at 10.30 a.m. Let's see how Autodesk ended yesterday. I wouldn't know when I posted the topic. I wish I could know. <laughs> I do. Autodesk, ADSK. It, in fact, closed lower. Isn't it beautiful? We could anticipate a trade, be ready, and probably enter it before others. If I look at the intraday chart, you can see it tried to go back up, but then fell down sharply. At minimum, if we were holding a long position, you would be careful. And my view remains the same. You may look for a shorting opportunity in Autodesk. I should also mention this is not a 360 degree shorting opportunity. In Q technique, we call a trade a 360 degree trade when fundamentals are weak, industry is weak, as well as technical is weak. Here, technical you can say is weak in some way. If you go back to the daily chart, you can see the relative performance is steeply trending down. So it is underperforming the market. It came to value area coming down. Technically, it has some weakness. Doesn't have a Q trade setup, but it is showing some some weakness. Industry was showing weakness in the morning session. Let's check it out. Application software, isn't it? Application software, yes, I think so. Yes, application software industry. Let's see how it ended yesterday. We can go to infotech sector and drill down. 
and I'm using QH now. Application software over five days, it remains strong. And if, if I expand the paste columns, I can see it is starting to show deceleration. So there is some weakness in technical, some weakness in industry. Our fundamental is still strong, neutral to strong because valuation is neutral, earnings growth is strong. We cannot say it is weak. Therefore, we can take a short trade. However, that will not be a 360 degree trade. If you wait patiently for a 360 degree trade, your overall trading result would be better. What would be an example of such a trend? I think I shared another one. You can look at Facebook. Facebook is also a shorting opportunity. If you are using Q360 degree technique, you can take long and short both in the same market. For long trades, you will look for strong industry, strong fundamental, strong technical. Short opportunity will look for weak industry, weak fundamental, weak technical. I showed the example of Autodesk, not a 360 degree trade. You may look at Facebook, that may give us a 360 degree short trade setup. And the forum is open to the public. You can have a look at that. Let me now show you a long trade example in the current market setup that I shared three days ago on PBF and energy stock. And I could buy it at the very bottom. It was not a perfect Q trade setup. Why? Because the weekly had a memory resistance nearby, but it had many bullish signals. It tried to go below the watermark support and reversed, creating a false downside breakout. It displayed the bull release signal. In the daily chart, there was a bearish headwind, uh, not bearish. In the daily chart, there was a bullish headwind earlier that could push price up. And as is quite common, when price comes back to the same area, some buying may still be left. On top of that, we had another bullish headwind signal. It also had a watermark support. Price created a false downside breakout. Price was at pendulum low, price extreme low, and it created a pressure extreme plus pressure U-turn. It had heavy activity while it was falling and then it reversed strongly. There were many bullish signals in the stock and this was an opportunity to catch it at the very bottom. Many trading systems don't have a reliable mechanism to buy at the bottom. It is quite common, therefore, for many traders to look for stocks only that are already in a strong uptrend. We can take that kind of trade also in Q systems that go with flow trend following trade setup. But by the time this stock will give a trend following trade setup, the reversal traders will have a large profit in their hand, for example, in this stock. And the stock gave us a very low risk entry opportunity. This was the chart at the time I posted it. And I looked at the fundamentals, beautiful fundamentals. Valuation is great, cyan color under valuation column. Earnings growth in the latest quarter is, I mean, very great. Fantastic earnings growth. So it was a fundamentally strong stock, both in terms of valuation, in terms of earnings growth in last quarter, also in terms of dividend. Pays a dividend of 4.1%. Then I looked at the industry. Energy sector was weak for a long time and all the energy industries were weak, but Look at this industry when I posted it. It became one of the strongest from one of the weakest on that day. And it was accelerating also, one of the most accelerating industries. So this was an example of a 360 degree strain. Doesn't mean it will always give profit, but it means that it was the highest probability trade probably that you could take because you had all the forces in your favor. How is the stock now? It's not the point whether the stock is making profit or not. It's an example of discipline trading. And if you keep on taking discipline trading where industry, fundamental, technical, everything is in your favor, you will do well. Having said that, let's look at PBF. I shared the stock 
I think one of these days and then price has gone up. It is still below the memory resistance line. I mentioned of the memory resistance in my post. If it goes up and breaks the memory resistance, then the trade will have even more profit. Already the trade is having quite good profit. I took it in this case using a synthetic stock position. I sold a put and I bought a call. I think I, I, if I spent about X dollar, I have recovered almost all of that X dollar. I was okay to take a synthetic long position because I was okay to take a strong, <laughs> repeat, I was okay to take a synthetic long position because I was also okay to take a long stock position. Otherwise I would avoid shorting the put that leg of synthetic stock. But in this case, I was okay to take the long stock position, which makes me okay to take the synthetic stock position also, which has a long put. What am I saying? Which has a short put and long call leg. This trade is so far working well. It has a significant profit. I'm sure even if it tilts down from the memory resistance, I'm not going to let it go into a loss. I bought about 45 days expiry. That is my standard expiry period, unless I am taking a day trade, 45 days expiry. Apparently research shows that is the optimal expiry date for options trading. Let's look at the futures now. Let's look at the uh, S&P futures, NQ, for the week, here I am looking at the weekly values. For the week, you can see NQ is the strongest. Oil is going up for the week, it is up very much, 4.4%. If I change it to daily now, in the overnight market, now it is about 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, you can see they are up. NQ is up, ES is up, RTY, Russell 2000, and YM. Dow futures, they are down. Dow had been affected by the Boeing's news, Boeing crash. Oil is actually up. So our PBF trade is expected to do better. Today it is expected to go higher. Let's look at E-mini S&P 500. If you watched my last weekly market roundup, you would know that on this day, this was Friday. Based on that, I mentioned that it is most likely going to go up. And I talked to some of the traders. I talked to them, chat with them, shared with them in different forums. I mentioned to them that on Friday, I closed almost all of my short positions, options based short positions. That was a very good decision because as the market went up, the stocks would have also gone up. Now you see it is at the memory resistance where bearish headwind came earlier. There are many news in the market. We don't need to look at the news. If you look at the news, it will seem like because of news, the price is dropping. Nothing may be further from truth unless it is major news like the Boeing crash there are certain price levels in my experience where people are buying and selling. When price comes there, it will more likely reverse like now. Not sure, but it may be more prone to reverse than to break out. It can break out also. Whichever way it goes, using the Q systems, you would be able to take a low risk entry opportunity. Right now, looking at the memory resistance line, in the daily chart of S&P 500 futures where Barry Shedwin came earlier and the fact that it is now overbought in the daily chart will be cost us about buying stocks. Where did we buy stocks? We started buying it from Friday's market close as I mentioned in the weekly market roundup. Our one hour time is over. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you for joining.
I look forward to seeing you in our next market meetup live webinar. Have a great week and trade profitably.